Hi, and welcome back. We found two five and three seven. And three uh, seven is up here. Okay, but that doesn't help us that much. Um, you do need to know what it, what it looks like though, right? This is an exponential function. Um, what is the asymptote? Do you know what the asymptote is? It's going to be a horizontal asymptote. Y equals what? Four. Four. Good. Your asymptote starts at zero. But because we shifted this whole thing up, your asymptote's going to be at Y equals four. So here's our asymptote right here. And then here's our graph. And it looks like that. Exponential growth. Okay? And I have two specific points that I graphed here and here. There they are. Yeah, hopefully yours looks prettier than mine. Okay, what's the domain of this graph? Domain is all reals, good. And then what's the range? Um, you can write y is greater than 4, or you can also, if you like interval notation, you can write 4 to infinity. Okay, now let's take a look at the next one. The next one is going to be um, the graph of a log function. And a log function, um, you know, is the uh, inverse of an exponential function. So this is to take your basic log base 3, move it 4 to the right, and 2 up. So you can always plug in some points. Like if you plugged in the point x is 4, you couldn't, right? Yeah, that's not allowed. Sorry. If you plug in x is 4, you're going to get the log of 0. You cannot take the log of 0. But if you plug in x is 5 into this, you do log base 3 of 1. What's log base 3 of 1? one. Almost. Zero. 0. Then you get 0 plus 2 is 2. Ooh. Do you see the other one on this side in the blue? And then let's plug in, um, let's plug in x is 7. If you plug in x is 7, you get log base 3 of 3. What's log base 3 of 3? 1 plus 2 is 3. Okay. So let's plot those two points. Let's go to 5, 2, and 7, 3. And then what is the uh, asymptote here? Our vertical asymptote starts at zero, but this graph is being shifted four to the right. So our asymptote would be x equals four. So right through here. Okay. And then your graph is going to look like that. Pretty. Now, let's go ahead and find the domain and range. So the domain of this graph is going to be x is greater than 4, or you could say 4 to infinity. And then the range would be all real numbers. Okay. Now, looking at the graphs and all the stuff up here, what can you conclude about them? Anybody? Yeah. They're inverse of each other. Perfect. Yep. These graphs are inverses of one another. Inverses of each other. The reason why, as you can look at it, everything is switched. Here the asymptote is y equals 4. Over here it's x equals 4. All the x's and y's have been switched. Even those points that we found, even domain and range, okay? You can also tell, because if you were to draw a diagonal line through the middle, Sorry. It's a reflection. Isn't that so cool? Don't you like doing that on the same? No, Sam says no. Okay, thanks, Sam. You can get out now. <laughs> okay. Right, yes, yes. Jeanette, Jeanette and I are really tired of you. Okay, number three. That's on. And you know what? That's recorded. So if you ever want to hear that again, listen to it. All right, just kidding. Love you, Sam. Mm -hmm. Have a great weekend. All right, number three. In a typing class. Did you guys ever take typing class? Yeah. You used to? I took typing. It was a trimester long. We used to have trimesters here. Yeah. 
it was here. It was, I was in the ninth grade, my trimesters, and my typing teacher was Mr. Goodhart. The singer, yes, <laughs> he taught typing. My typing's terrible. It has nothing to do with him. He's a great teacher. Anyways, all right. In a typing class, the average number of words typed per minute is given as n. After t weeks, you see that little t in there, um, was found to be this logistic model. How many words per minute should a student be able to type if they've been in class for five weeks? So t is in weeks. So we're gonna take t equals five and we're gonna plug it in. So get your calculators out if you don't have them out. I want you to practice this. Because I know you guys know how to plug stuff in, but this is a little complicated. Okay. We're going to do n equals 157 divided by, and make sure you put parentheses. You only need, you know, one set of parentheses. You do 1 plus 5.4 times e to the, and it'll give you that little carrot thing. Uh, negative 0.12 times 5 and then get out of there and <laughs> that's really messy and put parentheses around it okay so try it with me do it um, it's e to the negative 0.12 T can you see it yeah that's nice you can zoom in on that Point one two times five, close parenthesis. So about how many words? Let's round to the nearest word. How many words per minute? You've been in this class for five weeks. You should be expected to type how many words per minute? Anybody get it? 40. 40. Okay. About 40 words per minute. Is that pretty good or no? It's kind of average. Average. Yeah. Okay. Now I want to get to be a better typer. So find the time necessary to type 75 words per minute. This is a lot different, isn't it? Okay, 75 goes in for n now. And we're gonna set 75 equal to 157 over one plus 5.4 times e to the negative uh, 0.12 t. We can solve this algebraically, we just don't know how yet. Or maybe you do from last year, but we haven't done that this year. So what I would do is I would set 75 equal to y1. Okay, we'll say that's going to be our y1. And then this whole side will be y2. And I want to find the intersection of them. So let's practice doing that.
What did I do?